When you start building websites for yourself or for clients, there's going to be lots of times where you need to have a pop up to do different things. For example, to get someone to subscribe, to get a lead magnet, all manner of different use cases. Today, I want to show you how we can use Bricks to not only create our pop ups, but how we can then connect things up to an external service. For example, I'm going to connect this up to my Fluent CRM, which is handling all of my automations and my email marketing and things like that. Obviously, you can use this in various different ways and you can connect it up in various different methods. I wanted to demonstrate this because a lot of videos only cover how to create the pop-up and then not what to do afterwards. Sadly, at this point in time, until version 2 of Bricks is released, we don't have integrated, dedicated webhook functionality. So we have to rely upon some different tools. So to do this, we're going to first of all create our first pop-up. But we're also then going to use Fluent Forms Pro to connect this up to Fluent CRM and use a webhook to connect the two sides of things together. Like I say, you don't have to go down this route. You can use various different methods. And when 2.0 of Bricks comes out, you can probably harness the webhooks functionality there. But let's take a look at how this actually works. First things first, let's come in and create our first pop up. To do that, we come into the template section and we add a new template. Give it a name. Then we're going to select the template type. So we set this to be a pop up. And then what I would recommend is as you start to create more and more templates, especially with pop ups and things, organization comes incredibly handy. So for me, I use Happy Files Pro to organize and group things together. So I'm certainly going to pop this into my pop ups folder, but you can easily use template tags or template bundles, which are integrated functions inside Bricks itself. So with that being said, let's publish this. And now we can pop into Bricks and start creating our first pop up. So the first thing we need to do is set the conditions for where and when and how this is actually going to work. So to do that, we're going to come up into the settings section. And from there, we're going to come to the template settings, open the pop up. And inside here, you can set up various different parameters for your pop up. So you can set up if you close on backdrop and escape, the escape key only or none. You can also create your own custom close buttons. And we'll take a look at that in a moment. You can set the backdrop breakpoints, all those kinds of good things are available inside you, including things like pop up limits. So you don't want to bug your particular viewer. You can handle that by using this particular function. However, what we're going to do is we're going to create this as someone clicks on a button. So they actively interact with the element to open the pop up itself. So we're going to leave everything inside here for now. I'm going to come back into our settings. I'm going to come into our template settings into conditions. I'm going to add a condition. We're going to set this up now to say where and when we want this pop up to be displayed. So for this example, we're going to say the front page because that's where our button is going to be. And that's all we need to do. We're not using any dynamic content, so we don't need to worry about the populate content. Let's save this and we've got the basics now set up. So now we need to create the actual pop up itself. Now, I'm not going to bore you by showing you how to do this because you probably already know how to use the basic elements inside Bricks anyway to add images and things like that in. And we're not going to use the form function that's native to Bricks because, like I say, it doesn't have that webhook functionality anyway. So create it in any way that you want. I'm simply going to install one of my templates and we'll move on from there. So now we've got the pop up created. Let's handle this little X button to close the pop up down. We can use the escape and so on keys. That's all set up as part of the pop up. But it's still nice to have this kind of X to close things down should you want to. So we'll select the icon. We'll come over there, make sure the class is selected, and we'll come over into our interactions. We'll add an interaction. And what we're going to do is we're going to select the trigger, it's going to be click. The action is going to be to hide the element. In this case, it's going to hide the pop up. And then we choose the target. And the target in this example is the pop up itself. Now we just choose the template, which is our sample pop up. And that now means that that close button will close that pop up down. Simple as that. OK, so now we need to use a form to be able to submit our information. In this example, we want their first name and we want their email address. Nothing more than that. Very simple form. To do that, we need to have a form. We're going to use Fluent Forms to handle this side of things. Again, you don't need to use this. You can use any form plugin that supports webhooks. That's the only important thing we need here. So what we need to do is create a form. So we're going to say, choose a template. From here, you can choose one. So we can say, for example, the subscribe to newsletter. That's a good starting point. We'll click Create Form. There's our form created. Now we can select the form elements, remove anything we don't want. So we don't want the last name, for example. You can choose then where you want to position things like your labels and so on. So we're going to set these to be at the top. We'll choose our email. Same thing here. We'll set this to be at the top. 
You can label these as you see fit and you can customize this as you want to. Let's get rid of this text. We don't need that. That's already inside our actual content. So once we're happy with the form layer, we can click on save form. We'll give it a name first though. We'll call it sign up test and click rename. Now if we jump into the settings and integrations, you can customize various different aspects of the overall form. So for example, you may want to have a message pop up at the end. You can put the message inside there. Go to a page, to a custom URL and so on, handle things like the opt-in and things like that. Again, if you want me to cover how to use Fluent Forms Pro to handle this kind of thing in more detail, let me know down below. But for this example, we're going to say we want to go to a page and I've already created a thank you page. So all I need to do is select that from here with sign up confirmation. And if you want to put any redirection message and so on, you can do. And then there's things like for, you know, how you handle the whole process afterwards. We're going to leave that as it is and click save settings. The important thing here is we need to use a webhook. Now, if you don't know what a webhook is, a webhook is a way of allowing two different pieces of software, for example, two different sites with software on to talk to each other. So in this example, we've got the form on this particular site, but we want to connect it up to my Fluent CRM account that's on a different site. I use one centralized location that has my Fluent CRM on there, which is not a front facing website, is literally there to do a job. I need to connect this form up to it and use that centralized location. To do that, we use the webhook. So all we do is choose webhook. You click to add a new webhook, and this now asks you some basic information. So we need to find out how to fill this out. So first of all, let's give it a name. For this example, we'll keep it really simple and really obvious. We'll come back to the request URL in a moment. The request method, if you're using Fluent Forms and connecting it to Fluent CRM, we change this over to post. We change the form request format and change this to JSON. You can leave everything else as it is. We don't need to touch anything inside there. All we now need is the webhook URL. To get that, you're going to hop over into Fluent CRM. Now inside Fluent CRM, you simply come into your dashboard, you come into the settings section, and you come into the incoming webhooks. I've already created a series of webhooks for various different things. They do different jobs. All you need to do is click on create a webhook. You can give this a name. So we'll just create one temporarily just to sort of show you the process. Once you do that, you set it up and connect it to a list. Now a list is basically your mailing list. So if you use any kind of email platform before, you create lists that's going to contain the actual email addresses and the details of the people that sign up. And you can use things like tags to segment that information. You can use multiple lists if you want to. It's up to you how you want to set things up. In this example, we're going to simply choose the option for general subscriber, we can select any tags we want. So for this example, we're going to say the 25% discount one, default companies, you can ignore that and the status you can choose whether they're pending unsubscribed or subscribed up to you how you want to handle double opt in. In this example, I'm going to say subscribed just for this just to demonstrate and we click on create. So that's now created the webhook for us, configured everything. And what we need to do is grab the actual webhook itself. To do that, that's listed here. We click on the copy and that's copied the webhook over. Now I'm going to delete this because this is not the one that we're going to be using. I just wanted to demonstrate how you set it up. Now, if you're getting value from this video, why not hit that thumbs up button to tell YouTube that you like it? But if you don't like it, hit the thumbs down button twice as that works pretty well too. And while you're down there, why not hit that subscribe button to be notified when new content like this is released? Anyway, let's get back on with this video. Now I've copied the actual webhook I want to use and I'm simply going to paste that inside you. Once you pasted it, you click on save feed. And that now has connected the form when it's submitted to the webhook on your Fluent CRM. Like I said, you can use other tools for this. You can use things like Public Connect, you can use Flowmatic, Zapier. All those will give you webhook functionality. So don't feel like you have to use Fluent CRM if you don't want to. And any form plugin as well. You don't have to use Fluent Forms. But these kind of connect up to each other in a very simple, painless fashion. So it's worth taking a look at those if you're in the market for these kinds of tools. So now that we've connected our form to our Fluent CRM using the webhook, we now need to put that into our actual pop-up. It's very simple. Let's expand this out and come into the relevant section. And from here, we're going to come in and add a new element, and we're going to add in the shortcode element. There's our shortcode, and now we can put the shortcode for the form that we're using. Just grab that from your forms, and click, it's copied, paste out our shortcodes, Give it a second or so, and there's our 
email form. Now it looks terrible because we haven't actually styled it. So you can spend a little bit of time styling everything up to make it all look nice and neat and tidy. And I've already done that on the actual form that we're gonna test out in a moment. But we'll say we're happy with the look of this. So that's our pop-up created. Now we need to set up something to make this open. So we're gonna add a button in and we're gonna connect that up. So we're onto our page and now we need to connect things up. So we're gonna use this button, which has been styled just to look like a text link. We're gonna select that and we're now gonna set this up to be able to open that pop-up. To do that, we've got it selected. We come over into our interactions one more time. We're gonna to click to add a new interaction. Same as we did before, select the trigger is click. The action is going to be show element this time and the target is going to be pop-up. And then we're gonna choose the template we want to use. Now I'm gonna use the template that I've set up properly so it all looks nice and neat and tidy but you use the one that you've created so we're going to choose that from the list and that's basically all we need to do so if we now save this and test it there's our button text we'll click there's our pop-up there's our form let's pop in our details and test out our webhook we'll ask it to send me my discount we'll click ok that will then take us over to the next page which is the thank you page with the video and bits and pieces on it that's what i'm working on here ignore this particular video but now we've connected everything up, we've tested it out. Let's jump over now into Fluent CRM and see if everything is working through our webhook. So we come into a list that's been added using that webhook and any tags you've applied to it. You'll see there's my entry. It's been tagged with the relevant tag in this example, the EWD Web 25%. And I've been added in correctly and subscribed and all those kinds of good things. So what we've seen in this video is how we create pop-ups, how we use those to interact with content, how we create a form using, in this example, Fluent Forms Pro, how we then use webhooks to connect that up to our CRM, testing it out to make sure everything works. And now we can drop people into automation sequences. So for example, once that's been completed, we can then create an automation to do other things. So in this example, the first thing that happens is when they subscribe like this, an email is sent out to them with the relevant code applied to it. So this is the automation that's being used. Once they add it into that particular tag, so if we click on here, you can see once they have this tag applied to them, which they'll have when they subscribe, filling in that form as part of the webhook, it tags them. They then get an email. As you can see, we click here. There's the email with the discount code and all the information included in it. And then in this example, the funnel ends here. So that's a very simple example. But you can easily do other things because now, because they're tagged, they're in a specific list, for example, or whatever you want to set up, we can now apply various different automations to them. So for example, let's say that we now have that person, they've had their discount, they go, now I want to buy the Essential Web Designers Documents Pack, link in the description. That will then put them into another sequence. This connects up to my platform for delivering my digital content. This then sends a webhook back to my Fluent CRM that tags them as a buyer. So what we need to do then is we need to update some information. So for this, I've got another automation. We've got a trigger, like we've seen before. So this is when they're added into the Essential Web Designers Documents Buyer. So they're given a new tag and you can have multiple tags applied. We're going to tell them to remove the 25% discount tag. So that says, Next stage is when they've been added to this one, remove this tag. That's what we've done here. Then they go into a sequence. So wait seven days and we get a review request email. So they'll get an automated email asking them for their feedback, which then sends them over to a nice simple questionnaire. There's a nice conversational form and they can fill that out if they're so inclined, which hopefully they will be. Then you can see the funnel ends here and then you can do other things. So you can create as many sequences as you want. So by connecting all these things up, you have a lot of options on how you can create and sequence everything and make it really automated. So you can easily use this kind of technology, set these automations up for clients, create your pop-ups, your lead magnets, and all those kinds of good things, automate so much. And then you can have them easily on a maintenance plan, which you control the whole sort of sequence side of things. And you run something like Fluent CRM or Flowmatic or any of these kinds of tools on your server. And you charge them an annual or monthly fee for actually having access to that facility. It could be much cheaper than Zapier and you have full control over it. Anyway, that's just one idea of what you could do, but hopefully you found value in this video and it's opened your eyes to how you can connect various different tools up together in a very simple fashion, but open up a ton of really powerful possibilities. And obviously you can go way beyond this, connect this up to multiple different tools, not just Fluent CRM. The world is your clam, as it were. Anyway, all applicable links are in the description down below. My name is Paul C. This is WP Tuts. Until next time, take care.